Hello guys! I make a quick video to show you the differences between the 2.0 uh, beta release and the final one. I, had, I added uh, a couple of new things. I'm going to try to make a quick video, not the long one like the one before, but I just want to show you a couple of things that has been improved. So the first one is the new meta theme color feature. Let's go in the um, theme settings and now you see a new option, global meta theme color. And you can here set a color and save. By the way, there is also an option, um, but I'm going to talk about it later. Let's just save the global meta color now. And if we go on front end, let's uh, refresh and inspect the HTML going add, whoops, going add here. You see now we have the meta name theme color content and the color we choose. This will apply on the whole site because it is the uh, global meta, uh, meta theme color but you can also apply a custom color for a specific page. Let's go back in the, t in the builder and you, you need to click on the setting, page setting, general, and now on the bottom here, you see a, a new option, theme color, and you can cho choose the meta theme color for this specific page. Be aware that we can't use the um, the variable, the CSS variables here, we need to use either, it, it's written in the in the description here on, on the bottom, either X, RGB or HSL, because uh, the browser um, doesn't uh, recognize the CSS variables inside the, the meta uh, theme tag. Okay, this is the first new uh, improvement. The second one, let's uh, keep on track with the color manager. Let's open the color manager. You see a couple of things uh, changed. The first one is we have now an icon here, which will copy the CSS variable related to the color. So if I, if I over on primary, click on copy to clipboard. And you see var primary has been successfully um, copied uh, to the clipboard. If I control V, we'll see that the variable var primary is correctly assigned to the clipboard. Okay. The second one is, uh, I believe, really cool. It's a new option to see which color is active on the page. So right now, if you see on the list, um, we will assign the primary color to this element. Uh, I may have a little issue. Okay, now it works. Let's go in uh, here. Typography. Typography and let's assign color primary. Now let's reopen the color manager and you'll see if you zoom here on the primary, we have a new icon on the top active on the page. So now the, the inside the color manager, it will scan all the page and see which um, variable is applied to this page. And if, for example, we go to the CSS, and let's make root. Oh, no, sorry, now it's... I'm not sure if I actually... Um, well, let's try it like that. Color, and let's make var primary. Um, prime, no? Oh, okay. Prime, Mary. Oh, maybe it doesn't see it. Okay, let's, let's just do primary can type L1, okay, and let's now open the color manager, and you see, now we have another active icon, because I used 
this variable inside my, CS my custom CSS. So it scan also the custom code that you have on the page. Okay, this is cool. Um, we have a new way to drag and drop and uh, reorder the colors now. So you see, we have a new icon, uh, a handle icon next to the color. And if we click on it and drag, it works like before. It won't work anymore if you drag um, outside the handle. So you, you, you must be aware to uh, just focus on the on the hand, on the handle icon and move it. But now we have a multi-select option. So to to drag multiple elements uh, at once, we just have to click on the handle icon. You see, it's selected. We can do this with multiple multiple colors. And then we are going to drag this color. It will group all the color because the colors that we chose, and just release it and it will uh, expand it again and we just moved five colors uh, at a time let's just put them back where they were so let's just go here and now we moved uh, multiple colors at once okay another thing i want to show you i'm not sure i, act I actually activated it but let's check it no i didn't Let's go back to the, um, the team option and builder elements. Let's toggle the dark mode, toggle and the dark mode button. Let's say, let's uh, save and reload the builder. Okay. Let's add a button, for example, and let's just put um, here. Okay. Now uh, it slightly changed because before the the icon um, was hard coded, you have no way to change the icon inside the light mode and the dark mode. Now you can uh, change the icon. So if you go here, you can open the um, the icon library and uh, choose whatever you want as um, the light icon. And the same thing goes to the dark mode. If we go on the dark mode, we can change the icon that we want to use. So let's go back here and it's now, it's now the note. So we, we, you could also change the, um, uh, the way that it works. So now the light one is when you are in light mode and the dark the dark version is when you are dark, but uh, sometimes you want the opposite. So you want the, the light icon when it's dark and okay, you understood. Now you can do that because you can change the icon and you can modify the background color. And so you can adapt this uh, button as you want. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go back to the theme setting. Just uh, something I want to show you that we have now a new option to enable dark mode on front end. So uh, by default, it's uh, toggle on because by default, if you are using uh, the dark mode, you want your dark variables on the front end. But if you are not planning to use uh, dark mode at all on your website, you can just deactivate this option and all the dark variables for the, for the colors won't be printed on your on your front end and and in this case the light mode will apply without without uh, issues but um, you won't have a, a, a theme swatch uh, between between uh, light and dark okay um, and then slide yeah uh, so the um, the the script for the dark mode has been slightly changed because some users uh, were complaining uh, about a jump of colors when they, are, when they were loading the dark mode. Now, uh, when you refresh the page or change a page in dark mode, you shouldn't see any color jump and it should just display dark uh, from the beginning. And also uh, another um, Improvement is now um, 
the default the default um, way that um, the dark mode works is uh, when when your visitor enter in your web page it will uh, scan for the prefers color scheme which is a setting that the user set on on the on the browser or on the on the iOS and um, and if they prefer the dark mode the dark version of the of their browser then the dark mode will apply also on your website but as soon as as they um, toggle on or off the the button the dark mode button it will add uh, a little cookie on the browser to the browser to save um, their preference and then the preference will, uh, from the cookie will apply uh, from that moment and later so as default uh, dark mode will apply based on the preference uh, color scheme schema and then um, if they if they toggle the, the, the button it will it will then use the, the cookie and the last thing from the color manager is before when you were adding um, capitalized letters so let's say fffff there was an error uh, it, was, it wasn't calculated correctly now as you see it's passed and uh, transformed the letters from uh, lower cases and now the white value is correctly applied okay uh, let's jump now inside the um, class manager and you see we have the same um, handle that we saw previously in the color manager so you can move classes from this handle and you can also select multiple class like we did before and just move them grouped released and it will be correctly reordered um, even when you drag uh, multiple items. Same thing, we have a new icon here that can copy the class to the clipboard. If I click on the hero button, the hero button successfully copied to the um, to the clipboard and if I click here and past, you see hero button is uh, correctly past it. Okay, um, also uh, an, a new addition is in the bulk action window. The, um, the design slightly changed. I think it's more clean like that. And uh, now if you, for example, uh, let's target the grid. Um, if, if you want to rename in bulk, but uh, for example, we don't want um, let me let me try to rename first so let's replace grid with my class so you see now in the preview we have my class one two three but let's say the two i want a, a, a custom uh, name for this one you see that we now have an icon rename if i click on it i can change this one and i will say custom and if I uh, run, so uh, rename classes, uh, go back on the overview, uh, we'll have here, let's filter my class, we have class one, class three, and class custom. So you can customize your, the, your name even inside the bulk action. And the same, thi the same thing apply to the duplicate. You can manually rename your classes um, when you apply bulk actions. And also, um, we have uh, a new button reset here on the bottom. Uh, I'm not sure you will be able to see it uh, on the video, but believe me, it's uh, next to the main uh, CTA. Um, and this will reset all the values that are inside the fields here. So if for any reason you entered a value here, okay, and click reset, it will reset all the fields. Okay. Class converter. Let's open the class converter. Couple of things change here. 
So like the class manager, there is now the possibility to modify uh, manually the classes. So for example, if we don't want container here, but custom class, we can change inside the input uh, and block custom, for example. But let's say, uh, so we can rename the classes as we want. And we can also skip uh, the class generation on specific elements. So if I click, I don't want a class on the image, I will click on here, it will become red. And let's say I don't want all of them here. And create classes. Let's check what it's created. In the container, we have our custom class. And in the block, we have a block custom, just like we said before. And all the other have no classes added because we set the option to be skipped. Okay, so we have now more granular control over the class names and the class the class is uh, assigned to each element. A um, couple of things I want to show you. If you are using um, a CSS variable uh, framework, we have now a new option in import framework here. Usually you had to import your external JSON. You can still do it. Just click uh, add CSS framework from here and you can uh, enter your label and add your JSON file. But in some cases, if you, um, if you work on a password protected website or on a server that limits the access of external files, which, which I had a couple of, uh, of support tickets uh, about that. Now we have an option to load the, um, the framework from the database, just select from the database. And you see now you can enter the level here, just like before, and you can pass your object directly from here. It will save the JSON object on your database and it will pull the results on, uh, inside the builder from there. So since we are, you are using the database, you don't access uh, to an external file anymore and you shouldn't experience uh, issues um, on password protected websites and, uh, and etc. So that, that should make your, your CSS framework work in any case. And the last one I want to show you, let's go back to the, uh, the editor and, um, but give me a second. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Let's go back in the custom CSS. And we had a, an issue before 2.0 with the new root selector here. This has been fixed in, in 2.0, but, um, now uh, we have an, uh, 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 an option, an additional option uh, with the keyboard shortcuts. So now if we make R and tab, it will create the roots just like Bricks does. But we have a new option is to create uh, R but uppercase and make tab and it will, it will create the same shortcut, but with the brackets, and it will automatically put the, um, the cursor uh, in the middle of the brackets. So you can just uh, start uh, writing your CSS declaration. And the same goes with the, the shortcut here on the, top, on the top right. If you click on Add Roots, and let's make it three, three times, you see it will always add the root and put the cursor on the last the last one in the middle of the bracket. Okay, that's it. I tried to be really quick, 20 minutes, just still, still not enough. But um, okay, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and found it uh, useful. And see you for the next one.